From my blood come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is my video all about Valyrian steel swords, the other items during House of the Dragon that currently exist and belong to people at this point in the timeline. There are many more that we know about later in the timeline during the events of the Game of Thrones series that eventually get lost or stolen during wars or other major events. But at this point in the timeline, there are more in existence that we know of and we know where they are than in any other point in history. Some of the Valyrian steel weapons that we've been seeing on the show actually do return during the events of the Game of Thrones episodes, so I'll explain those easter eggs too. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes like I did for the Game of Thrones series, be sure to subscribe to get them all. We're also doing a giveaway for HBO Max subscriptions. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know in the comments which your favorite Valyrian steel weapon is. Not all of them are weapons though, some of them are just regular items, some of them are armor, and some of them are crowns, so I'll explain those in a second too. But Valyrian Steel is meant to be like a Song of Ice and Fire's version of Damascus Steel, like an upgraded version of Damascus Steel in real life. It weighs far less and it's much stronger than normal steel and they can use it to kill White Walkers, Whites, and the Night King, probably because it contains dragon glass when people make new Valyrian Steel. But the reason on House of the Dragon, and even more so later during Game of Thrones, that it's so rare and valuable, so expensive, is that the art of making it is thought to have been lost with the Doom of Valyria. So no one knows how to make new Valyrian steel, and the art of reshaping existing Valyrian steel into other weapons or items is also incredibly rare. Really good example of that is Tywin Lannister having the Stark's greatsword ice melted down and reforged into Widow's Whale and Oathkeeper. The art of merely reshaping it, which itself is incredibly hard to do, is super rare. Like you can count the number of people who can do it on one hand. As the name implies, it was created by Valyrians during their rise to power while they were also in the process of taming dragons and their blood majors were developing the art of dragon bonding. We don't know if they created Valyrian steel first or if they tamed dragons first. The art of taming dragons is something that took them a long time. It didn't happen overnight. It was sort of like the domestication of horses with a whole bunch of blood magic involved. I've already done a separate video talking about that, so I'll link it in the description below. And I'll talk more about the dragons that we'll see in the future of the series. There'll be 17 total dragons during House of the Dragon, but we won't meet all of them during the events of Season 1. But really good example with Valyrian Steel, so Daemon Targaryen wields Dark Sister, the ancestral blade of House Targaryen that belonged to Visenya Targaryen, Aegon's sister wife, before him. If you put a weapon like that that weighs less and is way stronger in the hands of someone who's a great fighter like Daemon, it turns them into a one-man wrecking crew just ripping through most normal soldiers. Which is why he can make a run like that, even though he doesn't care whether he lives or dies, it's one of the reasons why he can do stuff like that. Valyrian steel is also resistant to most types of fire, all but dragon fire. Really good example of that, the most notable Valyrian weapon in the episode so far is the Cat's Paws Valyrian dagger wielded currently by Viserys. He puts it in this fire to heat up the blade, revealing the Valyrian steel glyphs etched into the blade by Aegon the Conqueror, who had it made, revealing his prophecy of a Song of Ice and Fire, the prophecy of the prince who was promised. If you did that with a normal blade, it would just ruin the blade. Also, the other cool detail here, the new addition to the lore, big reveal of the history of the Cat's Paws dagger, is that the dagger originally belonged to Aegon the Conqueror. Now, because he wasn't born until after the Targaryens moved to Dragonstone, it's possible that he just got the dagger from another Targaryen, like he was given the dagger as a present, and then he had the special message reforged into it by Valyrian Steel Smiths. The way the books talk about the history, all art of making new Valyrian Steel was lost during the Doom. Just because it was such a big secret, not that many people, even inside the Valyrian Freehold, knew how to make it, and when the Doom happened, all those people were killed. Like, it wasn't like they were going to teach the art of creating new Valyrian steel to any smith that walked along. It'd be like passing out dragon eggs to anybody that just came through your city. Here's a nuclear weapon, just feel free to use this however you want later, especially if our two nations get into a fight. So it wasn't like the Valyrians passed this knowledge on to anybody that wanted to learn it. So I do kind of think that the dagger came from ancient Valyria and they just brought it with them when they moved to Dragonstone and eventually it wound up in the hands of Aegon Targaryen and then when he had the prophecy, he had the prophecy itself etched into the blade, reforging it a little bit. And just for reference, Aegon the Conqueror, even though they treat him like this really ancient Targaryen, was actually 7th generation Dragonstone. So they'd already been there for a long time before he decided to conquer Westeros. So Aegon never saw Valyria before the Doom, unlike Valyrian the Black Dread. Valyrian the Black Dread and Melisandre are like the two only living people who survived 
close to the events of House of the Dragon, Melisandre is obviously alive, that might have had a chance of seeing Valyria before the Doom. But the idea during Ancient Valyria is that the Dragon Lords have thousands of dragons, they each probably have their own weaponsmith who's capable of creating new Valyrian steel, so creating new Valyrian weapons and items were relatively common for them, even though then it was probably still relatively expensive. So you have thousands of Valyrian weapons and items in the ancient Freehold before the Doom, but a lot of them probably lost or destroyed during the actual Doom. But because there were so many of them, just a few survived and eventually leaked or were sold or stolen and given to other houses in Westeros and Essos. Currently during the events of House of the Dragon, there are at least 22 Valyrian steel weapons, armor, or items, if you also include the very small Valyrian steel links that the maesters reforge into links when they master the higher arts of the occult and magic. Like within the Citadel, one of the areas of study a maester can choose to learn is magic and the occult itself. When the maesters master a particular art, they add that link on the chain around their neck, so the Valyrian steel link represents magic in the occult, and during the events of Game of Thrones, it's only worn by two maesters, like that's how rare it is. Lewin, the Stark's maester, and Maester Marwyn, who the show just kind of cut out. But it's just the example that across the many years, the maesters themselves also possessed a very tiny amount of Valyrian steel that they used in the making of special links. And of those 22 pre-existing Valyrian steel items, Ice, for example, is reforged into two smaller Valyrian steel swords, so technically there's like 24 of them that we know about. Starting with the most famous one and working our way down the list, there's the Cat's Paws Valyrian Dagger, now confirmed to have been reforged by Aegon the Conqueror when he added the secret Valyrian message to the actual blade. Blackbyre, Aegon's original greatsword, which was passed down to each new Targaryen king, currently in the possession of Viserys Targaryen here. Eventually it was lost during the Blackbyre rebellions later in the timeline, so it's probably somewhere in Essos right now. There's Dark Sister, which I already mentioned, currently wielded by Daemon Targaryen. Originally it was wielded by Aegon's sister wife Visenya. Before that, we don't know who it belonged to. Eventually it's given to the Blood Raven later in the timeline. He takes the black later, then becomes the Lord Commander a couple years after that, and eventually abandons the Night's Watch to go north of the Wall and become the Three-Eyed Raven. And after that, we don't know what happened to it, so possibly it still sits under his tree. Like, there were a lot of theories about this when the original Game of Thrones episodes were airing, like, is that sword in the background there really Dark Sister? There's Ice, the Stark's greatsword. During the events of House of the Dragon, it belongs to Kraken Stark. We saw him during Episode 1 when the Lords of the Realm were swearing the Oath of Fealty to Rhaenyra Targaryen. Eventually, we know Tywin Lannister melts it down and reforges it into Widow's Whale and Oathkeeper. And one of the other reasons why nobody ever learned how to make new Valyrian steel, like you can't just take dragon glass, crush it up, and try to add it to regular steel and make new Valyrian steel. It's not that simple. It's because the Valyrians would use special spells when they were smelting new Valyrian steel, and nobody in present day knows what those spells were. So this is like the special magical component to creating new Valyrian steel. We just saw the new Valyrian steel necklace that Daemon gives to Rhaenyra. It also kind of looks like the metal of his rings are also Valyrian steel, so it's also possible a lot of the other members in the royal family right now have Valyrian steel jewelry that's been passed down through their family. Aegon the Conqueror's crown was made of Valyrian steel. It still exists during House of the Dragon and we'll probably see it during Season 2 at some point, so I won't talk too much about it right now, but it is a big item during the events of House of the Dragon. Also, during the events of the show, the High Towers are a very big deal. Their ancestral Valyrian blade belonging to their family is called Vigilance. It's probably in the possession of Otto Hightower's older brother, Hobart Hightower, here, because he's the current lord of the house. Typically, within a family, usually the head of the household is given their ancestral Valyrian blade if they possess one. Jon Snow's Valyrian sword, Longclaw, is the ancestral blade of House Mormon, so during House of the Dragon earlier in the timeline, it would still belong to their current head of the house and the pommel would have still been a bear, not a direwolf. The old bear, J.R. Mormont, had it refashioned into a direwolf when he gave it to Jon Snow. We haven't seen any Tarleys as far as I know, but Heartsbane is their ancestral blade. Later after his death, it would have been given to Samwell unless he abdicated the head of their household to someone else within the family. We also just met the Lannisters again during Episode 3. During this part of the timeline, their family had the ancestral blade Bright Roar. Eventually, it's lost by Tywin's younger brother, Tyrion's uncle, when he sails to ancient Valyria looking for glory. That's one of the reasons why Tywin Lannister wants to melt down ice later in the timeline and give one of them to Joffrey and one to Jaime. Because otherwise, he would have given their family's ancestral blade Bright Roar to Joffrey when he took the Iron Throne. Lady Forlorn is an ancestral sword belonging to House Corbray. Nightfall is a sword belonging to House Harlaw. Red Rain is the name of the ancestral blade belonging to House Drum in present day, but they stole it from House Rain. They're the House Rain reference during the reigns of Castamere Song, R.I.P. 
Lamentation is the ancestral blade of House Royce. It was lost during the storming of the Dragon Pit, which is another big event that we might see in the final season of House of the Dragon. Orphan Maker is another sword belonging to House Roxton. And then there are a couple of Valyrian weapons and items coming from people in Essos. There's a sword called Truth belonging to Moreto Rogar in Lys. There's another curved Valyrian steel sword belonging to Sandok the Shadow, one of the soldiers in the service of House Rogar in Lys. The reason their family probably got a couple of Valyrian steel weapons is because they got tied up in the later events of House of the Dragon, so we might see a version of that play out in the later seasons. There's a Valyrian steel Arak, the type of weapon you see the Dothraki using, and House Celtigar supposedly possesses a Valyrian steel axe, and they're another vassal house of House Targaryen, kind of like House Valyrian, that also have the blood of ancient Valyria in their veins. During episode 3, when they were explaining what happened to Crab Feeder, there were a lot of theories that Crab Feeder was secretly one of the bastards or one of the second sons of House Celtigar because their house's sigil is a crab. We'll probably see a version of the Celtigars later in the show because the current lord of their house joins Rhaenyra's Black Council. Then later in the timeline, Euron Greyjoy eventually finds Dragonbinder, a Valyrian steel horn with the same types of Valyrian glyphs on it that are on the cat's paws dagger. When you blow it, the glyphs glow and it allows you to control dragons, but it also kind of melts the brain of any regular person that tries to use it. They kind of imply that Targaryen's people with Valyrian blood are the only ones who can use the horn without being hurt. And also during the events of Game of Thrones, Euron Greyjoy, Euron Greyjoy's brother, has a vision of the future where Euron Greyjoy is sitting on the Iron Throne wearing an armor suit made entirely of Valyrian steel. But there might be other new Valyrian steel weapons and items that show up during the events of House of the Dragon that we didn't know about previously. Because for instance, Rhaenyra's necklace is like a brand new item in the canon that they introduced for the show. Because House Valerion is also so powerful and they come from ancient Valyria, it's also possible that they have some Valyrian steel weapons as well. If we see any pop up on the show, of course, I'll mention those in videos. If you have any other questions about Valyrian steel, just in general, or the weapons that are featured in the show, the books or Game of Thrones, just write them below in the comments. My full episode four video will post Sunday, just like normal. I've got a couple other bonus videos I'm working on this week, and there are a bunch of other really big series that I'm doing videos for right now. So make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. I'll name a giveaway winner the next time I post a House of the Dragon video. Everyone click here for my full House of the Dragon episode 3 video and click here for my episode 4 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.